minute mark right now at 79.60 U.S. All right, time for a nutrition Q&A. Diana Steele is with us in studio. Nice to have you here as always. Thank you very much. Lots of calls lighting up the line, so let's oh, get right into it. Diane is on the phone from Maple Ridge. Hi, Diane. Hi. Hi there. Go ahead with your question. Yes, I have uh, been diagnosed with diverticulitis, and I would like to know what type of foods I could eat. Mm -hmm. So a diet with diverticulitis is really one that's high in fiber. You're trying to make sure that you have enough roughage to um, clean things out on a consistent basis. So as long as you don't have a flare-up, there's no outpouching and it's not infected. Um, to maintain a healthy gut with probiotics, um, just make sure you've got those good bacteria in there and lots of fiber from your fruits and vegetables and whole grains, legumes like lentils and chickpeas and kidney beans is really important. There was once a thought that you shouldn't have seeds, uh, so fruit fruits with seeds and um, you know pumpkin seeds but that's no longer the case you can absolutely have seeds you can eat pumpkin seeds you can also eat nuts and nut butters and they are very good sources of, of fiber and some protein in there as well so the diet isn't as restrictive as possible but if you do have some um, in, some flare-ups or inflammation then you should go through some bowel rest and then when you're better then go back to a healthy diet that's very high in fiber and fluid. So you're watching the flare-ups and kind of you would know if you have pain. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah, but you can prevent them by getting that fiber in there consistently. Okay. Uh, Joe's on the line, I believe, from White Rock. Hi, good afternoon, Joe. Hi, I was just have a question. I was reading the nutritional chart on um, a can of cranberry sauce as well as marmalade. Um, is there no vitamin C in canned cranberry sauce or marmalade? I didn't realize that there was none, but it's not surprising that there would be a very low amount, um, mostly because when you cook a food uh, for a long period of time, the vitamin C is very volatile and it breaks down, so there wouldn't be a lot of vitamin C left. That's why when you're cooking your vegetables, we recommend that you do it for a short period of time until they're tender crisp and not to cook them in the water so that they don't the vitamin C doesn't leach out into the fluid. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised. Sometimes they add vitamin C back to certain foods um, with, when they're canning them as a preservative and it also maintains the color. Um, but yeah, that just goes to show maybe going for frozen cranberries would be a better option for you. Is frozen generally better than canned? Oh yeah, in all absolutely. Cases. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, yeah it because it's is. not heat processed, uh -huh. so it would be flash frozen, yeah. and it locks in those nutrients. And it's really, really close to the time that they were harvested, so there's not a lot of nutrient loss for storage time as well. Got it. Yeah, that's good stuff. Maggie from Nelson's on the line. Hi, Maggie. Hi. Um, I've just been diagnosed with uh, thyroid issues, and I'm wondering if, if there's uh, something in my diet that I can add to enrich it and make it uh, work better for me? Yeah, so it really depends on the type of thyroid um, issues that you're having and um, often it's medication that does the, the main thing and so just making sure that you're eating a well-balanced diet and getting all of the nutrients. Uh, sometimes there can be some weight issues that happen depending on if you're hypo or hyperthyroid and so trying to maintain a healthy body weight can really help and if you're feeling as though you're losing weight um, and the medications aren't quite right, you should definitely talk to your doctor. Uh, getting enough protein in there is important and if it is something where you've gained some weight because of the medication, then trying to increase your activity and watching those really high calorie snacks and filling up on your vegetables and fruit and eating consistently throughout the day can really help. More callers for you? Are we, no, okay, so let's maybe just throw the phone numbers up one more time because we've got about a minute and a half in case one more person wants to get through. There's the numbers right there, 604-422-6398. Anything that people are asking you about consistently as we head into like summertime and we're all thinking about getting into shape, anything like that? Well, absolutely. I think, you know, with the summer coming and people are starting to have more patio um, sessions yes. uh, with a little bit more wine mm. and um, possibly eating out a little bit more, it's really important to assess how often you're socializing, um, not to take away from that social time but you don't always have to socialize with a lot of alcohol or with high calorie foods and so those share plates the appetizers I always cringe when you know someone else orders the appetizers at our dinner table and it's all you know the fried um, fish and um, chicken wings and nachos and I'm just like oh that's not exactly what I would choose to eat I would rather people have you know some edamame because it's nice and low in, in, um, yeah, well, in saturated one. fats anyways it's got some protein in there it's still high in calories and then you can also do sides of 
veggies and um, big salads that you can share between friends. You don't have to do the deep fried calamari and uh, cheese sticks and things like that. Also, um, a quesadilla would be an easy um, option and there's a little bit of protein in there if you had the chicken quesadilla and you don't have to add in a whole bunch of sour cream and things like that. So just being mindful of your portions and eat from a plate. If you're eating from a shared plate, then you're not really realizing how much food how you're much actually you're consuming. Taking. Yeah, mm -hmm. and keep something green on the plate, right? Which is what I'm trying to do, more veggies. If half your plate can be vegetables at lunch and dinner, that would be a really good goal. Half, that's a big yeah. goal. But good, it's totally good doable, and you'll find that you're not constantly hungry. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Good for you all around. Nice yeah. to see you as always. You too, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Diana, so much for coming in. Uh, if you didn't get through today or you've got a question for Diana and you'd like to get in touch, a couple of ways of doing that. 604-739-3290 is the phone number, and eatingforenergy.com is the website. On Twitter, she is at eatingforenergy. Thanks again, Diana.